David, everybody please stand up. You now have, I'm going to sacrifice, hang on, I need my hand up, please. I'm going to sacrifice one minute of my speaking time so that you can stretch your body and say hello to the people on your table. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Josh. Thank you. Josh. 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 Resin. 
Why? Why did he do this? Why did he bother? And he came to this conclusion. He was not a farmer. He was not an engineer. He was quite a good engineer, actually. He said this. What is the, clue, what is the key to maintaining human freedom? Your freedom. And I put to you that you are human because of freedom. Otherwise, we are just like animals. There's nothing that we do that is any different to animals. The one thing that distinguishes homo sapiens, human beings, is freedom. And I used to be a lawyer. David, I've recovered from this. <laughs> As a lawyer, this whole concept of we give away our freedom so easily. The, the Magna Carta in 12, what was the year? 12, 13, who knows? 12, 15. 12, 15. The Magna Carta was a fight between the king and people for freedom. And if you look around, how many people ring up, ring up radio stations and say, there should be a law against this. I say, stuff laws. I say, your freedom... Your freedom is what makes you human, and wanting governments to create an environment where everything is controlled is bullshit. That's a straight technical Australian term. <laughs> I don't swear when I'm speaking in public, but it's bullshit. And so Adrian says, what's going to guarantee freedom? And he says, profitable, sustainable family farms. The Australian Financial Review, I have spent 20 years as a corporate tax lawyer, 24 years as a professional speaker with some of the biggest companies in Australia and a view about the thinking process of senior management in these big companies. The Australian Financial Review says the only possible way to make money in farming is corporatise large monoculture. I say bullshit. And I say to each one of you, it's bullshit, and I'll happily have that debate with you. You do. It is not the only way to do this. And this question... Imagine if all the farming in Australia is corporatised and we're all living in the city. Just imagine that. You would lose your freedom. So Adrian says, what's going to guarantee freedom? What's going to guarantee? And with my Hungarian, European background, I have generations of fighting for freedom. You must understand how important this is. The system wants to take it away. We in the hemp industry have an opportunity to do it differently. Adrian then says, what is the crop that is going to create that opportunity for farmers? He says, hemp. So why aren't people growing hemp? Because with hemp you can produce food, clothing, shelter. Stephanie, in Malawi, food, clothing, shelter. I'm working in the, in the Caribbean, I'm working in Thailand, I'm working in Hungary, talking to environments and African countries. What's the point of African farmers growing something and then trying to ship it out on the global markets? No. You grow it in Malawi, you grow it in the Caribbean, the sugarcane farmers, highly competent farmers, and convert it into food, clothing, shelter. This afternoon we're going to be talking about that. Phil's going to be closing. We're talking about all these wonderful products. Adrian says, how do we solve this problem? What's the problem with hemp? Why don't we do it? He said, decortication was the problem. That's the big why. And I, I really want to drive that. I want you to think about that. Think about whether you want freedom. And then we, as an industry, we have to fight against government. Have, have a look at what government wants to do with the control of this industry. Control, control, control. And we need government, but we don't need too much government. And that's the debate that we need to have. So... Our decorticator. Some of you saw it yesterday, some of you are coming tomorrow, more can come if they want to do it. This is, only costs $350,000. It's not millions, it's not $10 million, and it will process one to two to three tonnes an hour, depending on input. So you're invited to come to Austin, to our engineers in Geelong, to see this decorticator in action tomorrow. Our website also has a lot of videos of this working. This D8, this decorticator is so revolutionary that we have experts who think we're playing mind tricks, a bit like David, what's his name? <coughs> David Copperfield. He reckons we're playing a magic trick. They say, how are you decorticating without resin? Now, our machine is designed for this holy grail. They are the ideal crops. John Muir, you showed some of these crops. It is these crops that we're interested in slashing and putting straight through our decorticator. It goes up, 
that conveyor the whole flat. No rigging needed. The longer the, the longer the better. Okay, one to two tons. Now it will it will decorticate any material, but that's this is what it's designed for. The best results come for that crop. The dream is this: harvest in the morning, decorticate immediately, degum. <coughs> at lunchtime for three hours in a process that we've spent over a million dollars developing with CSIRO and Deacon, carve it and spin it by the end of the day to produce hemp yarn. From harvesting to yarn, and I've said to some of you on Tuesday night, TCI is committed to working to develop and with CSIRO with amazing capability of re-establishing textile manufacturing in Geelong. We want Geelong to be the hemp textile manufacturing centre, where all of the fibre that you grow and then decorticate, send the fibre to Geelong. We degum it here, depending on how much there is, we can set up other degumming facilities. That was the dream. Green decortication leading to magnificent fibre, magnificent quality materials. We have raw fibre, you can have a look at that on, our, on the table, the AIHA table, and degummed fibre. Short staples, we do not need long, long fibres. Why? Because the fibres are strong. Retting weakens fibre, destroys fibre. If you don't have to ret, it's incredibly strong. This raw fibre we've had tested by the Airbus Industries, it's strong enough to build the wings of the Airbus A380. It's incredibly strong. And all of you, who's ever harvested hemp fibre, who reckons it's not strong, the raw stuff, it's strong. Coming out of our machine, the herd, we'll talk about the herd this afternoon. The herd becomes valuable, of course, we've had no talk about that, but that's coming. There's a wall that I played in a small part in building, beautiful hempcrete wall. Who's ever been in a hempcrete building? Gary Rogers, put your hand up. How many homes have you built, Gary? A few. A few. <laughs> right, here's the stand up, so that we see. Come on, stand up. There's Gary Rogers, who's a wonderful builder in WA. Magnificent homes. And this biomass material in Malawi, in Sudan, in Somalia, these wonderful farmers can grow this stuff, convert it into their homes. Seven tons of herd, you can build huge numbers of houses, and Glenn's going to share some interesting views with you about the market. Some people say, where's the market? Do you know what the markets, the markets say to us in the hemp industry, we're not interested in you until you produce enough. <laughs> The farmers say, who's going to buy the stuff? There's a Mexican standoff. I'm not abusing too many Mexicans in the room. Who else came from Mexico? <laughs> Phil, you did, didn't you? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, there's a Mexican standoff. The markets say, we want it. The farmers say, we don't, we don't want to grow it until they buy it. Our dream, our game plan, is to generate market demand so it always outstrips production. Our dream, that means I've got two minutes, correct? Our dream is that we get contracts from Patagonia, for example, to produce 100 tonnes of textile a week. We then come to the farmers and we say, here you are, here's the seed, please produce the biomass for us, we will decorticate it, or you can decorticate it and supply the fibre. And everyone makes money across that supply chain. That's the dream. Start with the market, not start with mass production and then have a shit price for a beautiful product. Okay, technical term again, shit. Yes, that's right, Store high, inflammable stuff, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> We've made pallets, shipping pallets, body of the Lotus car. There are nine significant advantages. You know what those advantages are. Enlightened consumers are already hungry for this stuff. Successful competition requires five strategic initiatives. Number one, generate market demand for, her, for hemp rather than farmer push. Who's heard of the term greenwashing? Greenwashing is companies who say they're interested in reducing environmental impact, but not if it costs one cent more. They are not our market. We want to talk to companies that are genuinely interested in reducing their environmental harm. Patagonia is our ideal avatar. <coughs> there are other companies that think that way in composite materials, in textile materials, in building materials. 
Our job is to talk to those companies and say, we can solve your problem. We can... Secondly, embrace an abundance philosophy and not one of scarcity. Hemp can radically improve the lives of 70% of the world's population who presently can't afford to buy a hemp T-shirt. Where, where, where are their needs going to be fulfilled? Because I spoke to Adam on Wednesday, cotton can't get the land. All right, we're, not in, we're not in competition with cotton, we're in competition, as Adam said, with man-made fibres. And 70% of the world's population can't afford these materials. Let's make them, let's make their lives better by teaching them about him. In Australia, we can sell off our technology, help those companies, take a share in their winnings. That's our vision. For, that's a vision of a planet that can work for everybody. We avoid commoditization. Do not fall into this trap to make it easy for you. The oil producers, iron ore producers, sugarcane producers, I'll observe this globally. They are in the hands of the traders. The traders make the money, not the producers or growers. Do not give away this magnificent raw material at a cheap price. And remember jeans, the range of price of jeans, jeans for the same 600 grams of cotton ranges from $20 to $900, right around the world. Number four, harness the skills, experience and relationships in local communities to identify the specific hemp products that should be produced. Don't go mass, but don't go following the trend. Decide what each community should be making. Number five, educate our politicians against and help them get their support against the backlash. We've got various nine of the 12 products, the, the ideal products, we've done that work that require no more R&D. Sell the products that we need to do. Do not buy, go and develop huge R&D in new products. It's not needed. There are, there's such a need for these 12 products. So there you are, there's the game. Do you think I'm passionate about it? Absolutely. Do you think this will change the world? Absolutely. Thank you for being here. We have to think differently. Come back where I started. You have the freedom to think differently. You do not have to think like the captains of industry think today. Their thinking is constipated. Get them to have hemp seed oil and liberate their thinking. Thank you all for the Each has about one in 500,000 chance of becoming human. <laughs> <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we have Dr. Maggie Davidson.